My name is Quill Taylor, and I have taken it upon myself to record my findings pertaining to the life of a young boy named Anthony Todd. I'm just going to look this way. I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Finally. This is Quill Taylor recording entry number six as it is given. Entry begins. I'm in the caves, and the recording device seems to be working, contrary to what I've been told. I've just left Abby and Essa at a crossroads, mainly because I wanted to be able to record without Abby scolding me for bringing this thing. We've not found anything yet, but I'm hopeful. I'm not actually, uh, sure what to say. I wanted to record in case anything momentous happens, but... Well, I suppose I was so caught up in the idea that I forgot most of the adventurers just walking. The air is still musty. It's not too unpleasant now that I've been down here for a bit, but nonetheless, it's uh, still there. Okay, uh, I'll talk about something. I suppose I could talk about myself. Someone may have to listen to this eventually, so it should help if they know a bit about me. Um, let's see. Well, I'm Quill Taylor. My family is quite esteemed where I'm from, but I don't often like to flaunt my name. However, I am quite proud of my lineage, so I'm not hesitant to give my full name either. I'm a writer. I've published two books so far. Uh, I like traveling and meeting people. I have to say, when I came here, I expected to meet more folks than I did. I make friends quite easily, but no one here seemed to stick. It makes sense looking back, since everyone in town is essentially brain-dead. Well, okay, that, that's unfair. They still have different personalities and things. They're just dull. I tried to talk to a few more people once Abby and I properly discussed the state of Morgrove, but no one seemed to enjoy carrying out a conversation about anything beyond small talk. Except for Liv, actually, now that I think about it. Liv is the librarian. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. It's not short for anything, apparently. Olivia, or whatever. Just Liv. Anyway, I visited the library this morning as it was opening and saw her outside setting up that sign. Today was the first day I decided to ask her about it. She told me that no one ever really came to the library, and she's had some people come up to her and ask if the library is even open anymore. Her smile was a bit strained. She brightened quickly, though, and told me that she appreciated me coming in more often. I feel quite bad, actually. I've been going, because, well, frankly, I'm suspicious. And rightly so! She told me the organization pattern for the library today is a Caesar shift by 13 from the organization pattern yesterday. Who organizes a library like that? It's no wonder no one's ever in there. It's futile to try and find any book you're looking for. Not to mention, it's literally impossible to organize an entire library to that extent over the course of one night. I asked her about it this morning, but strangely enough, she didn't seem to know the answer. She seemed to think it just happened and doesn't remember doing it. This worried me, still does. I thought that even if Liv had some strange tendencies, she was different than the others in Morgrove. I do hope she isn't caught in her own pattern. Obviously, I, I want to know how she does it, but I'm not a criminal. I'm not going to break and enter in the middle of the night to snoop or anything. But I do want to go and knock or something. Seems like she'll be up anyway, and... Wait, does she live in the library? Sh she can't, but... Uh, I don't know. Liv is... It's her own enigma, I suppose. I really hope she doesn't have too much to do with all of this- Ah! It was just a bat. That's alright. <laughs> that was exciting for a moment. Oh, it works. It still works! Okay, okay. Okay. I, uh... I fell. The cave floor just dropped off and I didn't realize. Now I'm, uh... I'm not actually 
actually sure where I am. I, I can't find my torch. Hold on. Ah, uh, okay. Probably can't get back up the way I came. It was a pretty steep drop. Wait, hold on, there's... Ah. There's something. Looks like it was carved out of the stone. Smooth on top, let me see if I can... Almost looks like a, a coffin or a... Abby! I, I fell, I'm not sure I am. Why doesn't it work around you? Abby. Abby. <sighs> fine, fine. <sighs> oh. I must have hit record accidentally. That's embarrassing. And now I'm talking to no one. Great, wonderful. I just wish she'd stop hiding things from me. If we're going to work this out, she needs to talk to me. She needs to not be involved in all of this. She can't be a part of it. I'm tired. I'm tired, that's it. I'm just, I'm gonna go to bed. Pick up where I left off tomorrow. Entry ends, I guess. End recording. The Domestic Life of Anthony Todd is a podcast written and recorded by J.R. Steele and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. The audio is edited using Audacity, the free editing program. Thanks for joining me.